Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Logitech Ultra Thin Keyboard Mini. So this is for the iPad Mini. Now there is a version for the full-size iPad, which is a very popular product. I've done a review on that before, so I'll post a link in the description below so you can take a look at that. So they've basically shrunken down that design for the iPad Mini, which does mean some significant changes to the keyboard layout, and we'll explore that once we take a look around. But basically, this is a Bluetooth keyboard with a built-in battery that's rechargeable via USB. It connects to the edge of the iPad Mini, just like the Apple Smart Cover, has the same hinge design and everything. Uh, so it basically works on that principle, and it adheres to the front or protects the front of the display when it's not in use. So this retails for $79.99 from Logitech. It's available in two colors, black or white, to match your iPad Mini. So anyway, the packaging is pretty interesting. They've done a very nice job here, so we have a little drawer here to pull out. So inside we'll find our iPad Mini keyboard. A little tab here to lift it up pull it out so there it is wrapped in plastic with that aluminum back panel we also have a little drawer here with our accessory package so if we look inside here we should find our microfiber cleaning cloth for cleaning our iPad mini we also have some instructions probably don't need a lot of instructions for this uh, we also have our uh, I guess user license and agreement, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we also have a little cable here for charging the or recharging the keyboard. Very small, short cable, that micro USB connection. All right, so getting back to the keyboard itself, still wrapped in its plastic envelope. We're just going to peel this back and slides right out. So it is very lightweight. That's the first thing that stands out. It's just how lightweight this is. So taking a look around the keyboard, you can see that the uh, materials are color matched and textured matched to the iPad Mini. So we have this nice glossy plastic, which resembles the glossy glass on the iPad Mini. We have our Logitech branding. You can see up here we have our hinge, which is very similar to the hinge on the full-size iPad Mini smart cover from Apple, but this is plastic instead of aluminum, so hopefully it's less likely to scratch or damage your iPad Mini. You can see we also have these bumpers at each corner of the keyboard case, which provides some protection on the glass of the iPad Mini. So when it's in the closed, uh, closed position, you can see we have these nice rubber bumpers to add protection so that the keys aren't hitting the glass of the iPad Mini. So we also have this little slot here, which is how the iPad Mini slot latches into the uh, keyboard position. Uh, so essentially you remove the iPad Mini and slot it into the slot here, which props it up for you at a nice typing angle. Along the side, we'll have, we have our on and off switch. We also have our Bluetooth pairing button as well as our micro USB charger or charging port. Along the side, not much else here, but you can see just how thin it is, very thin. On the back, we have that aluminum panel, which resembles the finish of the iPad Mini. Now, the full-size version of this for the full-size iPad has a tendency to scratch because when you place this on a typing surface, for example, any table, if there's anything on that table, you're likely to scratch it at some point. So it would be nice if they had put some bumpers on here just to protect the case itself. So I guess you need a case to protect your case, but uh, I still like the idea. It's better, than, it's better to scratch your uh, keyboard than your iPad Mini. Now, just like the smart cover, the hinge automatically aligns to the edge of the iPad Mini, magnetically adheres to it. You can close it up. Works with the automatic sleep and awake function. So it wakes it up. Now, it's not a very strong magnet, so it holds on just enough to hold on to the iPad Mini for transport. But you can see it kind of lets go pretty easily. So it's mostly there just to help you keep it connected to the iPad Mini and it forms a pretty slim, lightweight form factor here. So you can see it's about as thick, it's maybe about as thick as the iPad Mini itself, so maybe doubles the thickness. And you can see it forms a pretty seamless look overall. It does have a tendency to slide around just a little bit here, so if you're gonna put this in a bag, you're probably gonna expect some movement here. But that's true of the smart cover, but because this is heavier and bulkier, it's more likely to do that in a bag. Now really, the keyboard is meant to only be used in one way, which is when you place the iPad in the slot. So the slot itself does have some magnets, so if you slide it into place, it will magnetically adhere to the keyboard, so there's just enough magnetic strength there to keep it in position, and it's pretty stable here. So if you look at the edge here, see so you have a nice angle, and there's just enough uh, force here to hold it in. So you can really apply some pressure on there, and it's not gonna pop out. So let's go ahead and pair this up so we can start using it. So the first thing we need to do is turn on our keyboard. And if we look, you can see we have a little green LED indicator right there, and now it's in pairing mode. So let's go to settings. 
Go to the Bluetooth, it sees Ultra Thin Keyboard Mini. Let's just tap that. And we're connected, so we should be all set to go. So let's go ahead and tap the home button. It takes us to the home screen, so we know we're good. All right, now let's take a look at the keyboard itself. Now, just to give you an idea of how much smaller this keyboard is compared to a standard keyboard, here is the full-size Bluetooth Apple keyboard. So you can see that the buttons are bigger, they're more widely spaced, and you can see that there are more of them. So the iPad minis had to uh, basically add a third function to a lot of keys in order to um, make it all work. Uh, so, for example, the caps lock and tab keys are integrated into the letter keys. So, tab is in Q, caps lock is in A. Uh, we also have fewer function keys down here. So, we have our function, option, command key, and the only control key is to the right of the space bar. Uh, we also have a relocation of the tilde key here, which is now integrated. Those, those punctuation points are now integrated into the brackets key up here. Again, you use the function key in order to use any of those. That's something you have to get used to, especially if you use those uh, items frequently. Now up here we have all of our designated or, or dedicated iPad function keys, uh, of course, which are also integrated with the standard uh, number and punctuation keys. So for example, we have our home button, which is a designated button here. So it works just like the home button. Uh, you can double tap it to launch your... Um, a launcher. You can tap it twice to get to your search and you can hold it to get to Siri. But um, Logitech has done a few other things up here. So we have our lock button here. So if you hit the function key, hold the function keys down and hit lock, locks the screen. You can also wake it up as well. You just have to slide to unlock. We also have a Siri button, a designated Siri button or dedicated Siri button. So again, you just hold the function key and hit that brings up Siri, so we have Siri up here next to the home button. Uh, we also have search, which works again just like double tapping the home button. Let me zoom out here so you can take a look at what I'm doing here. Uh, so if you hit that, it takes you to search. Uh, let's go to the keyboard. So we can invoke the virtual keyboard just by tapping this. So if you want to use the virtual keyboard instead of this keyboard, you have that option. But of course, you can use both at the same time as long as they're connected. We also have our picture frame mode which takes us to that picture frame uh, functionality we're familiar with. We also have our media control keys up here for reverse, play, pause, forward. We also have our volume controls here. So again, function to control those. And we have our mute button as well. Now on the directional keys, Logitech has also added some additional functionality. So it's added some text highlighting features. So again, all I have to do is hold the function keys and uh, each press of the left key will uh, highlight one word and each press of the forward key will highlight one word. Now in terms of ergonomics, there's no denying the fact that this is a cramped keyboard. This is a small, strange keyboard that you have to get used to. Um, once you're typing and once you get used to it, it's actually pretty comfortable. It feels like a standard keyboard uh, until a few things crop up. For me, the initial, my initial first impression was that uh, I couldn't find the right, I couldn't find the home row. To me, is always in the wrong spot. I want to be farther over because along the left side, they've removed keys and they've shrunken them down. So my instinct is to go farther away from them than I should be. I should be right along the edge. Um, so I'm always searching for the home key indicators here along the F and J keys to make sure I'm in the right orientation. Now once I do that, I'm good, but there's always this initial problem every time I go to type where I'm in the wrong spot. Uh, the other thing is they've shrunken down the shift key, so I'm constantly hitting the edge of the keyboard. There's a raised lip along the edge of the keyboard, so it's always getting in my way as my notifications go off here. Uh, so they're always getting in the way that becomes a problem. And again, you just have to learn to keep your fingers closer together on this keyboard. Uh, the other thing is the delete key. So we have a very tiny delete key. We have a very large traditional delete key. We exchange it for this tiny delete key in the function row, which is kind of a strange position. I don't have a big issue with that. I seem to hit it in the right spot most of the time, but it just seems to be a little too small. Uh, but for me, the biggest issue is just learning to orientate toward the left and using those smaller shift keys near the um, raised lip. So let's go ahead and type and just to show you, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm in the right orientation here, hold the shift key. See, I missed the shift key. Uh. So in any case, you get an idea of how this keyboard works. It is a challenge initially to use it, but once you're comfortable with it, once you're comfortable with the layout, I think it's actually a fairly comfortable keyboard and it's something that you can use for an extended period of time.
Now, in case you're wondering, this keyboard will actually work with some cases, although it's not really designed to work. So there's some, you know, iffy, iffy things to consider here. So, for example, I have my Switch Easy Cover Buddy here, which is a, a case I use with, it's designed specifically for the Smart Cover, uh, which works perfectly. This is something I've been using. Um, now, with the keyboard, it's not really designed for it. So you can see that the hinge actually overlaps the plastic, so it's not a, a tight fit, but it does hang on magnetically. Uh, so it actually works kind of well here. Uh, you can also see that it will slot into the keyboard, but it holds it up at a sharper angle, so it's not a very comfortable angle to look at, uh, and it's not very secure. So it's using friction here in order to, uh, you know, hold into there. The magnets aren't really working because it can't get close enough to the magnets. Now, in conclusion, I'm definitely impressed by what Logitech has done with the ultra-thin keyboard. Uh, mostly because I really didn't think they would be able to pull off a comfortable keyboard in such a small form factor. I mean, this is not a lot of space to fit a keyboard. Now, of course, they've had to make some design choices in order to pull that off, but I think they've made the right ones. They've given focus to the keys you use the most, of, of course, all the letter keys, and they've hidden a lot of less used keys behind the function button, which works fine, uh, something you have to get used to. For me, the biggest issue is just the size of the shift keys and the fact that there is a ridge along the side which gets in the way and the smaller delete key. But otherwise, it feels like a fairly comfortable keyword once you get used to the orientation. For me, the biggest issue isn't the keyboard at all, but it's just the fact that it doesn't provide a lot of protection and in fact prevents you from adding protection to the iPad mini. So you can see it's a very nice, thin, lightweight addition to your iPad mini. It's a very nice way of carrying a keyboard with you in a, in a, you know, a very convenient way. Magnetically attaches to it, provides some protection to the screen, but it doesn't provide any protection to the back. So that's going to do for me in this review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again in the next video.